it's time we are going to welcome into the stage the ant researchers. Just like the ants, these guys, they like to collaborate with each other. So uh, they, they come from the Department of Biosciences in Biki. So let's welcome now Jack, Uni, and Sania on stage. <laughs> nice start. <laughs> It's a good start, right? Mm. <laughs> that should be about it. Are we ready? Farmers. Vampires. An army that walks and walks. Nurses. Bridge builders. A police that never talks. Hunters and gatherers. Even slave makers. Suicide bombers. And undertakers. Architects and cannibals. Would you believe we are talking about animals? Yes. Farmers. <laughs> Vampires. An army that walks and walks. Nurses. Bridge builders. A police that never talks. Hunters and gatherers. Even slave makers. Uh, those right there, suicide bombers. And undertakers. Architects and cannibals. There is a lot more to say about these animals. They can do all of these things and many things more. We study these magnificent creatures, and if you allow us, let's peek through this little door. Well, this is a story of an ant, Gold Dory. She's a newborn egg in a huge city made of pine needles, so warm and so pretty. The shiny and beautiful queen, she's the head of the city, and Dory's sisters, the workers, they take care of all the nitty gritty. Some of them are nurses, and some take out the trash, some forage food from the forest. In this city, there's no need to shop with ant cash. All of the adults in the city are female like her. There are queens and workers, but no one is a sir. See, the males, they only live for a short bit of time, but the time that they have, well, it's a really good time. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, Doris' sisters take care of her, they groom her and clean her. The queen mother doesn't care should Dory ever need her. It's not that the queen would be mean, but she just lays eggs like a machine. Well, Dory, she was just laying around one day when her sister almost ate her. I mean, don't take it wrong, the sister doesn't hate her. Her sister is just a hungry cannibal, that's all. That's all? Yeah, but at least the sister smelled Dory first and ate someone else. <laughs> a close call. Yeah. See, the way that ants communicate is they wave their antennae around and they <laughs> smell how their friends smell like. Sniffing the odors about. That's the way even a tiny larva ant knows who to eat and who to not. Their neighbor's baby is a fine little snack, but when it comes to their sisters, they stop. Thank God. Um, even each city has its distinct smell, and that's the way anyone can tell who is a friend and who is a foe. Is that something that's important to know? Well, yes, because only through helping their sisters and brothers will any ant colony grow. Oh, well, when Dory finally appears from her egg, all she can do is beg, ask for food and care. She has no eyes, so she can't even stare. But the older sisters give Dory lots of food. They feed her mouth to mouth, and there's always another sister around to help when one is in doubt. And so Dory starts to grow, and very, very soon, her lava body gets surrounded by a cozy, warm cocoon. And safe inside her cocoon, her body starts to dissolve. She grows legs and jaws and a big, big butt. You can almost hear her evolve. And how about that? Dory is a lucky one. She gets nice and fat and grows a pair of wings. Those pretty things on her back mean that she becomes the queen. Yes! <laughs> mm -hmm. That's good. As a newborn queen, Dory has a choice to make. 
so you can fly away or stay at home. But that's a difficult choice, for goodness sake. It would be so lovely to just stay at home and be lazy. If she'd fly away, she'd have to work like crazy. Mm -hmm. She'd have to find a new home and become the queen mother. And that might be dangerous too, so why bother? But if she decides not to fly, if she decides to stay, the city's other residents, they might be saying, hey, hey. it's getting a little crowded. No more queens. <laughs> It's, it's like her sisters don't want her there. Yeah, no shit. Might lead to conflict mm. even, it seems. Mm. And I'm sure that all of you guys know that ants can be quite nasty to strangers. Well, with sisters, it's not a different show. They hate everyone they see as traitors. And in conflict, they are not a happy family at all. Because disagreement in ants, that would look like war. Mm -hmm. And anyway, the sun is shining so nice and warm, and it would be so exciting to fly. Mm. So Dory, she decides to leave her home, all that's safe, all that's known. She decides now it's her time to try. And the first thing on Dory's to-do list is to find herself a male for a brief tryst. Mm. And very soon she finds herself a mate to take on a tiny ant date. Yes. But, oh no, no! What a mistake! She realized way mm. too late that the guy she picked was from a different species. What to do now? Is this her fate? Well, now there's no point feeling blue. Because mm. there's nothing she can do. Her future is fixed, and now these two species, they're mixed. Mm. Her offspring will be hybrids. And though it sounds like they'll be cool kids, but... And it's a big but. In the DNA of the hybrids, there's a quirk. And so somehow, for the hybrids to have a son that lives just doesn't work. But Dory herself is fine, although she fooled around with the wrong species. Yeah, and actually what's happening in the DNA of these hybrids is such a weird thing, and we get to investigate it in my PhD thesis. So wait, so, so, so Dory's daughters are hybrids, and they can only have female kids? Yeah. But they will never have a son? Not even one. Huh. So Dory's reckless behavior, her getting lost in the moment with the wrong guy, <laughs> it'll affect all of her daughter's futures, and all of their sons will die. Oh, shit. <laughs> Well, Dory's life is still not even nearly done, although without a grandson, which is a pity. She will still live for 30 years, reigning her city. But what we really do not know, because it doesn't really show, is that who in this city is really in the lead? Who is the decision-making elite? Actually, is Dory just an egg-laying slave trapped in a cave in the city that she founded? Is she imprisoned in her egg-laying cave like a teenager that's grounded? Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of a valid point. And if we change our viewpoint, then the queen really is just a slave to the system that is bigger than them all. And the ant city is not a city at all, and the city and its ants are just one body. And even the queens are just tiny cells, and in the lead there is no body. And that right there is the reason that we care. The reason we do science. And feel passionate to share the wonders of evolution. See, evolution tends to take things to the next level, and it wouldn't help at all, even though an ant called Dory would be a little rebel. Because in the end, we are all trapped by the constraints of our species, except maybe Mr. Kidney. <laughs> um, and like Dory, we may think we have power over things, like... Um, Our PhD thesis? Yes, right there. 
So now we'll thank you all for listening to our little story and for joining our adventure with our ant friend, Dory. Thank you, Jack, Undi, and Sanya. So would you like to enlighten us on the hierarchy of ant researchers? So who is the queen? And who is the <laughs> There's no queen. We all we were workers, like you see. Yeah. So, any questions from the audience? Now is mm. your time. Yeah. Can you pass the mic? Hello. Uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. Uh, I have a question about this. Uh, <clears throat> And roles uh, at the beginning. Uh, you mentioned that uh, one of the roles is a suicide bomber. Mm. So, how, how does yeah. and do? It's a bombardier and you. something, something. Uh, <laughs> if they feel threatened, they, I think what they do is that they tighten their jaws and then they explode, and all of this goo goes over their enemies and then they die. So, they basically. Yeah. <laughs> suicide bomber right there. Mike, nice. There are some questions over there. Can you, Julia, pass the mic? Thank you so much. I'm wondering how often do you do like uh, parallels between structure of academia and the ant society that you just, <laughs> just <laughs> described? Where we are just slaves to the system. <laughs> <laughs> But who is Quite the decision-making right. elite? Yeah. Yeah. It's that a good question. <laughs> we can talk about this over here. <laughs> a fairly simple question. I just want to know, who was responsible for making the rhymes and how long it, it take them, took them? Uh. <laughs> well, actually, Unni is, is our chief rhyme it's engineer. The <laughs> but, they, uh, just, they just come. <laughs> Yeah, so we basically made the story, yeah? yeah? Unni made the rhymes, and then we kept poking at them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so but like, but like good ants, we do it together. Good ants <laughs> <dance> society. <laughs> so let's give big applause. Oops.